Last year, a few friends and I embarked on an adventure that was entirely out of character for us, a camping trip deep in the heart of the Tennessee woods. We were suburban kids, more accustomed to the hustle and bustle of city life than the serene, mysterious ambience of the great outdoors. Our chosen campground was far from the usual spots, hidden away off some back roads in a small, unfamiliar town. The idea was to challenge ourselves, break away from routine, and revel in the simplicity of nature. After a long drive, we arrived in the late afternoon, excited and ready for a weekend of camaraderie under the stars. Setting up camp was an adventure in itself, with a few tents scattered in the wilderness and all the food we thought we'd need for the next few days. Little did we know, our adventure would take an unexpected turn. As we settled into our surroundings, we encountered some locals who shared unsettling tales about the place. They spoke of hauntings, strange occurrences during the night, and cryptic beings that roamed the woods after dark. Frankly, I dismissed their stories as local folklore meant to spook outsiders. After all, we were just there for a good time, not ghost stories. As the evening unfolded, we found ourselves enjoying the simplicity of a campfire, swapping stories, and indulging in classic camping delights like esmores and hot dogs. Laughter echoed through the trees as we reveled in the joy of being boys out in the wilderness. We were having a blast, and the prospect of a day of fishing at a nearby lake added to the excitement. Eventually, the night settled in, and we retired to our tents, anticipating an early morning for our fishing expedition. I couldn't fall asleep right away, nature's call beckoned, and in my search for a flashlight, I overheard the local stories replaying in my mind. Nevertheless, I dismissed them as I ventured into the darkness to relieve myself by a nearby tree. In the pitch-black night, a rustling sound ahead startled me. Rationalizing it as a harmless creature, perhaps a bunny or a deer, I proceeded with my business. The encounter did little to quell my unease, but I brushed it off and returned to my tent. Little did I know that the night was about to take a turn for the eerie. Struggling to sleep amid the chorus of snores from my friends, I was suddenly jolted awake by a more pronounced rustling. This time, it carried an unearthly quality, a strange noise reminiscent of a wild beast. Panic set in, not just for me but for the friend sharing my tent. Darren's voice trembled as he questioned the source of the disturbance, suggesting the possibility of a bear. A tense discussion unfolded as we weighed our options. Running was deemed too risky, considering the potential danger if it were indeed a bear. We opted to stay put, silently waiting in the darkness, our imaginations running wild with thoughts of the mysterious creature outside our tent. Time seemed to stretch as we sat there, anxiously listening to the night sounds. Darren succumbed to sleep, but I remained awake, my senses on high alert. An hour passed, filled with whispers and the occasional rustling in the distance. The night was far from tranquil. As I tried to reconcile my fears, I dozed off momentarily, only to be awakened by the unsettling sound once more. This time, however, the first light of morning provided a dim glow, revealing shadows moving around our camp. Tentatively, I unzipped the tent and peered outside, expecting the worst. To my surprise, three black bears were leisurely investigating our belongings, their eyes meeting mine. It was a startling revelation, the source of our night's terror was not a mythical beast but flesh and blood creatures. Panic set in as I shouted, waking my friends and alerting them to the unexpected visitors. In the chaos that ensued, we collectively yelled and made noise, attempting to scare the bears away. Miraculously, it worked, and the trio lumbered off into the woods. The relief was palpable, and gratitude washed over us as we realized the danger we had narrowly escaped. The rest of the morning unfolded with a mix of tension and gratitude. We shared nervous laughter and exchanged stories about the night's events, acknowledging the irony of our initial skepticism toward the locals' warnings. Despite the scare, 
we decided to stay another night, albeit with a newfound awareness of the potential dangers lurking in the woods. The second night passed without incident, and we packed up our camp the next morning, leaving the Tennessee woods behind. The experience left an indelible mark on us, a tale to be retold with a mix of humor and reverence for the unpredictability of nature. Looking back, I can't help but appreciate the irony of our adventure. What started as a quest for the unknown, fueled by skepticism and a desire for excitement, turned into a night of genuine fear and a morning of gratitude for the presence of those three bears. It was a reminder that nature, with all its beauty and wonder, also commands respect and demands our humility in the face of its mysteries. In the summer of 2016, I was 14 years old, and my family and I were embarking on our traditional camping trip. We had been frequent visitors to this particular campground since I was a baby, creating cherished memories amid the natural beauty that surrounded us. However, this year was different. I found myself a year older and without the company of friends. My little sister, seven years my junior, couldn't quite fill the void, leaving me to navigate the campground solo. The campground wasn't the typical one with tightly packed tents and RVs. Instead, it sprawled with ample space, filled with trails winding through various trees. Despite the vastness, a solitary, eerie cabin caught my attention. Nestled far from my campsite and any others, it seemed abandoned. Passing by on my bike, I'd often glimpse the cracked front door, revealing an emptiness that suggested no recent occupants. One day, curiosity gnawed at me relentlessly. The door was ajar this time, a detail that hadn't changed in my numerous passes. The internal debate played out for a moment before succumbing to curiosity's allure. I approached with hesitant steps, the creaking door amplifying the eeriness. My eyes widened, and my jaw dropped when I saw him, an old man standing directly across from me. His voice broke the silence, urging me to come inside, assuring me it was safe. Fear gripped me as I turned to leave, but his sudden yell froze me in place. I felt his eyes on me as I mounted my bike and pedaled away hastily. The encounter left me rattled, but little did I know it was just the beginning. Days passed without incident, and the unsettling encounter faded into the background of my camping routine. Yet, as fate would have it, he reappeared on the last day of our trip. I was engrossed in an arcade basketball game when he sidled up beside me, his tall, wary frame casting a shadow over my game. Hey, kid, how come you didn't want to hang out, he inquired, his face etched in my memory. Tall, thin, with long white hair and a set of yellow stained teeth that sent shivers down my spine. His beat-up clothes spoke of a worn existence, and his unsettling smile revealed a predator's intention. He called me a clever little one, a phrase that only deepened the chill in my bones. A wink accompanied his unnerving smile as he sauntered away, leaving me frozen with unease. It was the last time I saw him, and the relief that washed over me when we left the campground the next day was palpable. Strangely, I never shared the encounter with my parents. Fear clung to me, silencing the words that begged to be spoken. Looking back, I realize I had encountered a predator, someone intent on luring me into a potentially perilous situation. It's a realization that sends shivers down my spine even now. The experience left an indelible mark on my perception of camping, once a beloved escape that became tinged with the shadows of that encounter. The solitude that once felt freeing now harbored a subtle fear, and the joy of exploring the campground on my bike was replaced with a wariness of hidden dangers. As the years passed, the memory persisted, a dormant fear waiting to resurface at the mere thought of camping. The once-beloved tradition became tainted, and the mere mention of that campground brought back the unsettling image of the old man with the stained smile. Trauma, it seemed, had woven itself into the fabric of my camping history. In the aftermath, 
I questioned my decision not to confide in my parents. What if he had targeted someone else? The guilt lingered, but the fear of what might have transpired if I had entered that cabin outweighed the guilt of silence. The lesson from that summer lingered, teaching me to trust my instincts and speak up when danger looms. It also left a scar, a reminder that the places we hold dear can harbor hidden threats. Despite the passage of time, the echo of that encounter reverberates within me, a cautionary tale etched into the core of my camping memories. As the years unfold, the question of whether I'll ever camp again remains unanswered. The love I once had for the great outdoors has been overshadowed by a lingering unease. Perhaps, with time and the right company, I can reclaim the joy that camping once brought me. Until then, the memory of that fateful encounter serves as a silent guardian, a reminder that even in the beauty of nature, vigilance is a necessary companion. I remember that Yogi Bear Jellystone campground in Indiana like it was yesterday, though the city's name escapes me now. My family and I, avid campers, frequented different campgrounds across the U.S., and this particular trip stands out, not for the joy it brought, but for the haunting tragedy that unfolded. I've lost count of how many times I've been to that Jellystone campground, over five, at least. The memories of carefree days, making friends, and exploring the vast outdoors used to fill me with warmth. But one incident forever cast a dark shadow over the place. It was on one of those camping trips, where the days stretched into weeks, and my youthful exuberance knew no bounds. I had befriended a boy named Jake, and together with our newfound camaraderie, we reveled in the campground's offerings, basketball, the arcade, swimming, and fishing. The possibilities seemed endless. One evening, Jake suggested we explore the trails that wound through the campground. The idea excited me, it was one of the few things we hadn't yet discovered in that sprawling haven. Little did I know, that innocent suggestion would lead to a tragedy that would stay with me forever. As we delved into the labyrinth of trails, the vastness surprised us. Soon, the encroaching darkness signaled it was time to return to the campsite. Park curfew loomed at 9.30, and we didn't want to risk breaking the rules. However, the allure of the trails was too strong to resist. We waited until our parents were asleep, the thrill of breaking the rules pulsating through our veins. Armed with flashlights, we embarked on our clandestine adventure into the shadowy wilderness. Naive kids, we found joy in the forbidden. Billy, our goody two-shoes companion, was uneasy. Breaking the rules didn't sit well with him, but the prospect of an unforgettable escapade overpowered his reservations. Little did we know that this seemingly innocent decision would alter the course of our lives. With Billy reluctantly in tow, it was just Jake, a boy named Carter who was older than us, and me. Carter, mischievous and seeking amusement, decided to play a prank on us. He disappeared into the darkness, leaving Jake and me in bewilderment. Laughter echoed as he reappeared, successfully startling us. Amused irritation turned into camaraderie as we laughed off the prank. However, the night took a sinister turn as Carter continued his game. He darted away into the shadows, playing hide-and-seek with us. Irritation transformed into worry as we spent what felt like an eternity searching for him. Growing tired of the game, we yelled that we were leaving if he didn't show himself. Unbeknownst to us, this decision would haunt me for the rest of my life. Carter, perhaps thinking we were bluffing, didn't emerge. We left, frustration replacing amusement. As we walked away, laughter echoed behind us. But soon, those laughs transformed into screams, piercing the night air. Confused, we sprinted back, fueled by fear. The once thrilling adventure now took a terrifying turn. Carter's screams tore through the stillness, and dread settled over us. He wasn't acting, something was horribly wrong. 
We ran back to our parents, panic seizing us. Desperation clung to our voices as we relayed the chilling events. My mom called the police, and the park security and rangers joined the search. Yet, one ranger seemed more interested in hounding my dad than helping. We scoured the trails, every step heavier than the last. Time slipped away, and the agonizing realization set in, they couldn't find Carter. Panic turned to chaos as Carter's parents, overcome with grief, blamed my family. The once-beloved campground now bore the weight of an unsolved tragedy. Eventually, we were kicked out of the park, forbidden to return until the next year. The guilt I carried was immense, I blamed myself for Carter's disappearance. The what-ifs plagued my thoughts, and the haunting screams echoed in my dreams. Years passed, and the weight of that night clung to me like a specter. The guilt persisted, gnawing at my soul. I should have done something differently, taken another path, stayed a little longer. But I was just a child, unaware of the cruel twists life could take. As I grew older, the realization dawned that I couldn't have changed the course of events. Carter's disappearance was a tragic twist of fate, a dark moment in the midst of a seemingly innocent adventure. Still, the guilt lingered, a constant reminder of the fragility of life. Over time, I've learned to cope with the memories. Speaking to friends and family about the experience, and seeking professional help, became crucial steps in the healing process. The wounds may never fully heal, but acknowledging that I was not to blame has been a crucial step in moving forward. Life has a way of throwing unexpected challenges our way, and sometimes, there's no rhyme or reason to the tragedies that befall us. The Yogi Bear Jellystone Campground, once a symbol of joy, now stands as a poignant reminder of the unpredictable nature of existence.